dolce. Welcome everybody to our BVNA webinar this evening. Attendees, I can see the numbers are, are creeping up as, as people join us this evening. So welcome to our BVNA webinar. Um, I will, um, we're just gonna wait a few seconds until all attendees have crowded into the uh, virtual room um, before we start. Um, and while everybody's joining, let's see if this week I can get the live Facebook streaming to work. Um, last webinar, it just, the, the software just crashed and it just wasn't playing nicely. Um, so fingers crossed, it works for us this time. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm sure you've all been on webinars before, but if not, just a few top tips so that you get the most out of a webinar this evening. If you're connected on Wi-Fi, if you're on a, a tablet, um, or a computer, then sometimes you can get audio disturbances. If that's the case, then you are able to dial in on the telephone. So if you can see your Zoom control uh, bar at the bottom or at the top, depending on what your device is on, your, on, if you can go to the little mic symbol and there's an up button, you'll be shown a telephone number, a webinar ID code and your participant number, you can then dial in on the telephone. This is being recorded, so if you miss or get disconnected or want to go back over some of the information covered in this webinar, it will be available, I believe, on Facebook, YouTube and possibly on our blog post as well. But we'll email you and I'm sure we'll put enough notifications out of, of how you can access that recording. If you want to ask any questions, please feel free to find the chat box again in your toolbar at the bottom and type any questions in there. We will be having time at the end to be able to uh, go through those questions. So um, that's the chat box in the toolbar. Type any questions in there and we will go through them at the end. So this evening's webinar is self-employment and the challenges during COVID-19. Uh, my name is Wendy Nevins. I'm currently Senior Vice President of BVNA uh, and I'm just here to chair the webinar and hopefully make sure things don't crash. Um, our speaker this evening is Nikki Ackerley. Nikki Ackerley um, is the owner of HR Support Consultancy. She has a BA Ons in Business Studies, is a member of the Chartered Institute of Personal Development, has been practicing HR for more than 20 years. HR Support Consultancy has provided the BVNA members advisory service um, for us. So those of you who are members who have signed up um, and phoned our advice service, um, it's Nikki and her team that are on the end of that. So I think I've covered all the techie bits that I need to. Um, so I will hand over to uh, Nikki, um, who will uh, give us this presentation, and I will mute myself and will be available in the background. Thank you so much, Nikki, over to you. Thank you very much, Wendy, and good evening, everybody. So we've faced a lot of challenges over the last six or eight weeks. Um, and we're going to run a series of these webinars covering some of the hot topics. I think it's fair to say as we start this seminar that we're on a bit of a roller coaster. The Coronavirus Act was written very, very quickly by the government and has required some clarification at various points on the journey. And I don't think that journey is yet completed. Um, so, if there are further updates on self-employment, we'll make sure you're notified via the blogs that are available um, through the BVNA. So what we're going to cover this evening is self-employment. And employment status is not a matter of choice. It's established as a matter of fact, with a statement of the particulars for each worker accurately reflecting their actual terms and conditions agreed. So as of the 6th of April 2020, got a bit lost in all of this coronavirus act, um, became a new piece of legislation that if you are an employee, you must have by the start date, a document that details the statement of particulars. Regardless of your status, 
whether you're an employee, that person who works for somebody else, or a worker, somebody who's defined as self-employed, whether you're an RVN or a VN, if you have signed the RCVS Code of Conduct and therefore carry out your responsibilities to the standard of the profession expected. The status of your employment or as a worker or as an employee um, is irrelevant with regard to that. So, employed status. There are three principal tests that must be met to determine employed status. Personal service, mutuality of obligation and control. Let me take you through those three. First one, the personal service. The individual must be required to provide their services personally rather than be able to sub a substitute to work in their place. So you're employed by a practice and it's you that goes to work. The mutuality of obligation is that the employer must be obliged to provide you, the veterinary nurse, with work and the individual must be obliged to do that work in return for an agreed salary or wage and on the terms and conditions laid down by the employer. And the control element is that the employer must exercise a sufficient degree of control over the manner in which you carry out the work consistent with an employer-employee relationship. Employees are paid through PAYE and employees have more employment rights than self-employed workers. That's because self-employed workers are usually their own boss. So this first slide this details really what an employed status is and is very important hinge point to come back to when we're looking at whether or not you're self-employed or whether you're an employee. And over the last few weeks, there have been many gray areas in this regard. And that's why I've started with this clarification. So self-employed status, you could be a, your own limited company, you could be a sole trader, you could be a contractor, an agency worker, or an agency locum. So let's look at those. The self-employed status of sole trader, the self-employed worker are still protected by health and safety legislation, and there is some protection against discrimination. Self-employed people work for themselves, but they can perform work and tasks on a contractual basis. So it means that there is still a document that details the service they're going to provide. Contractors tend to be self-employed. And agency workers um, from the 6th of April have additional rights. And if you work through an agency as a locum or on the agency books, then you will need a written statement of by the 30th of April 2020, if the one that you currently have mentions the Swedish derogation, as that was actually repealed in law, we'll come back to this later because it links into the IR35, but the Swedish derogation was repealed on the 6th of April. So if your agreement with whoever you're working for mentions that, you need an upgraded document. If you have been in the same job for 12 weeks as an agency worker, you're also entitled to be paid the same as an employee doing an equivalent job in that practice. So just to recap on that, self-employed people are covered by some discrimination laws, certainly by health and safety laws. You have your own professional guidance um, and you do need to have a statement that details what the service is that you're providing. So we have in many walks of life, people that think they're self-employed or people think they're employed. And in fact, this slide shows what the test actually is. I'm going to run through a few of these with you. A contractor could be self-employed, employed, or a worker, depending on whether or not they work for an agency. So some of the key tests are, can the worker, if you're self-employed, 
subcontract all or part of the work or hire their own staff to do it. So I'm self-employed and I have a team of people that I employ to work for me. And for example, this BMAS service, we're contracted to provide it. If I don't answer the phone, one of my staff can. And that factor indicates that I'm self-employed. Am I free to do other work? Yes, I am. I don't have to come to the BVNA office to work every day. Can I decide on when the period of employment is? When do I actually do the work? If I'm self-employed, yes, I can. I can work any day of the week. I can work in the evening instead of the morning. I can choose those things. Is the worker obliged to work at the company premises or at another location? A worker, self-employed person, can choose which location they go to and might be self-employed working for a number of different practices. The pay is agreed in this document by individual negotiation and you will be paid via an invoice. The records of those are called terms of business or agreement of service. They are not an employment contract. So this is a, a recognized test on whether somebody is actually self-employed or not. Self-employed people should be able to provide a unique tax reference number, a copy of the current agreement of services that usually the self-employed worker, you, have drawn up, a current certificate of public liability insurance, a current certificate of indemnity insurance, a recent letter from the HMRC confirming self-employed status, because you've been online with HMRC and set yourself up as a sole trader, or you've got the details of your limited company confirmed in a company's house registration letter. And if you are earning above £73,000, there will be a letter confirming registration for VAT and perhaps corporation tax. So items one to four, on this list must be provided if you're self-employed. Items five to seven should be provided if they exist. So you don't all have to have a, your own limited company. You can be a sole trader, in which case only one to four would be appropriate. Now we come to the issue of umbrella workers. An umbrella company is a separate company that acts as an employer for contractors who are working on a fixed term contract. They may serve as an intermediary between the contractor and the end client or the agency that they're working for. The principal function of an umbrella company is to organize payment for the contractor. An umbrella company acts as an employer, in many cases, to self-employed workers. And if you decide to work through an umbrella company, you may become an employee of that umbrella company, but still call yourself self-employed. So the documentation is vitally important that it accurately reflects what you believe it needs to reflect. For this reason, often, the umbrella rate would be higher than the rate you receive. Your take home pay will vary and the difference depends on the difference between how many days you work and how much the umbrella company retains as their margin. So they might charge you £20 a week to act as your umbrella company and for that they will take care of your invoicing, your admin, they might chase payment for you, they might process your payroll for you, and they might deduct and accrue money for your holiday pay or help you save some money in a pot for the eventuality that you take a holiday or that you're sick. So there is a little bit of a gray area here about umbrella workers and whether they really are workers in the true self-employed sense of the word, or if they're working for an organization 
that takes so much control that it removes some of their self-employment capacity. And it's really important that you check your documentation. And if there's any doubt, please talk to us individually about that um, offline. So the thorny issue of the IR35. New legislation was due to be introduced um, in April, but because of the coronavirus pandemic, this has now been postponed until April 2021. When the changes are introduced, the legal responsibility for determining employment status will move to the practice who is engaging the contractor. So my advice would be that if you think you fall under the auspice of an IL35, you should get this resolved, this relationship written into your contract for services as soon as possible. Every single engagement with a contractor, the practice will need to assess the service that you, the contractor, are being asked to provide, including the working practices of the freelancer and the terms of engagement to decide whether or not it's going to be within or without the IR35. There will be some exceptions for smaller companies. So if you work for a practice with less than 50 employees or an annual turnover of no more than 10.2 million, or a balance sheet of no more than 5.5 million, 5.1 million, then you will not be covered initially by the new legislation. But if you work for a huge corporate um, on the basis of a self-employed contractor, you likely will need to fall under the IR35 banner. There will be penalties imposed if you do not comply with these regulations and there will be penalties for tax avoidance. The IR35 um, came into effect in the public sector in April 2017, and an awful lot of contractors within construction fell under the auspice of the IR35 and were deemed not really to be self-employed and suddenly transferred over to become employees. And that is something you need to prepare for be sure about and take those tests that we've already talked about to see if you really are a self-employed worker. This is a really difficult time for everybody. Life is not normal. And homeworking and resilience is really important for your own physical and mental well-being. There are lots of organizations that have been talked about by RCVS um, and the BVA about how to ensure your resilience and your mental health is supported at this really difficult time. And if you are genuinely self-employed and you are struggling because you've been laid off whilst furloughed employees are being laid off, some agencies are laying people off first, locums are often the last ones um, to be brought back to work because they're very flexible, then often people feeling very isolated um, and need to look at their own resilience. So we've got some small examples here of home working and resilience and looking at what is in your control, what is within your sphere of influence and agreeing for yourself what is out of your control. And you, if you feel that you are out of control um, and you're feeling a little bit isolated because of your self-employed status, it's really important to keep in touch with the people that you normally contract for, keep an open dialogue, look at other practices in the vicinity that might need additional staffing, um, perhaps be flexible about the hours that you can provide. Um, and if they have a lot of people that are furloughed, and of course, if you're furloughed, it has to be for a minimum of three weeks, they might have a need for people to come in and work on a very short-term basis. Let them know if you're available. Go to those people and directly approach 
um, those local practices around where you live and can travel safely um, and offer your resources. On a day-to-day -day basis, resilience describes our ability to bounce back after setbacks and to cope with the pressures of daily life. When in isolation, building resilience is being aware of your own thoughts and feelings. And certainly, if you are a self-employed person working purely on your own, used to going into different practices, you lose the camaraderie, you lose that spirit of involvement with other people. And it is really important that you do look after yourself. Um, dig deep, find your inner strength, um, and ensure that you keep some structure to your daily life. So don't sit by the computer all the time or by your telephone all the time, gazing at your um, iPhone to check whether or not there's any work coming in. Give yourself a structure to your day so that you're being absolutely clear about what training you can be doing online, what agencies you can be contacting, what practices you can be contacting, and keep yourself a list so that you're making contact with people on a regular basis. Make sure, firstly, in the bottom diagram, that you're eating a balanced diet, drink plenty of water, take your daily exercise, try and maintain a good sleep schedule and practice this self-care. Sometimes being self-employed can be more isolating than at other times, and especially at this time. So a little bit about grants for self-employed people. Um, the grant system from HMRC for self-employed is not yet open. It will be open by mid-May. Remember that all of this um, has been written really really quickly so the coronavirus act and then the hmrc portal to actually pay people the employees who've been on furlough and next the self-employed grants um, the payments system will be open in the next couple of weeks um, they're expecting to make payments by early june 2020 so self-employed people will be able to claim up to £2,500 a month, the same as employed workers. And this scheme is called SEISS, the Self-Employed Income Support Scheme. If you're in um, financial hardship at the moment, there may be other places you can go to to get um, a short-term grant no people have been looking at rent holidays, um, etc. Um, and I've directed a number of people to the Daphne Shipman Benevolent Fund. So don't be on your own and don't struggle unnecessarily if you're having financial hardship at the moment. And know that this money potentially is on its way. So the government will pay up to 80% of wages for self employed workers. And this will be based on your average monthly profits over the past two years. It is only available to workers with profits up to £50,000. I wish I hear you all say. But the scheme will shortly be open. Payments can be backdated to the 1st of March, um, but as I say, they're not going to be made until the first week of June. HMRC will contact self-employed workers directly and ask you to fill in a form um, and the money will be paid into your bank account. Just as with furlough, income tax and national insurance will be paid on any payments received through the scheme as they're a replacement for your income in line with normal practice for the benefit of grants that replace that income. And to get this, you must have filed a tax return um, for 2018-2019 and you must have traded in 2019-2020 and at the end of this um, webinar um, you will be told how you can um, come back to us for more information um, and we have a fact sheet that details this a little bit more. One of the areas that has evolved in the last couple of weeks is that people with limited companies that take 
a minimum wage and then top it up with dividends um, thought that they weren't be able to claim very much from this scheme but that's been altered so that dividends can be included so it's a case of evolution not revolution in all of this as we move gently forward to actually registering and and getting some payment for self-employed people so alternative work opportunities might be to register with an agency speculatively contact other practices with your up-to-date cv keep in touch with your contacts 75% of jobs are secured through networking. At times such as this, it's even higher. So if you're looking for a job, looking for an opportunity, make sure all of your contacts know that you're out there and that you're available and what your skill set is. If you need to do a quick update of your CV, now's the time. Be as flexible as possible with regard to location and hours of work we are seeing more and more locums being pulled in to fill short-term gaps. Some recent issues that we've been dealing with, um, we have had some dealings with people that are working for umbrella companies and there was some confusion right at the beginning um, of the use of the Coronavirus Act, whether or not an umbrella company was going to accept that they could furlough the veterinary nurses um, who were working under their auspice. So what we had to look for was right to the root of this relationship, right to the root of the written documents and found that indeed the nurses working for those umbrella companies were entitled in some instances to be furloughed. We've had quite a lot of people that are locums and agency workers being stopped first and therefore experience a lack of money. As I've already said, there are places to go to. You can speak to your landlords um, about a rental holiday. Um, and under the Coronavirus Act, um, people are not allowed to be evicted currently. So we can get rental holidays. We can help you to um, make that application to your landlord if necessary. People have felt isolated. We've talked about that. It's important you look after yourself. If you feel you're not doing something particularly worthwhile, you can look at your CPD um, and you can undertake online courses. Um, and you are also allowed to go and work in other industries for a short period of time if you feel that that's a, a viable option. Just the same as people who are furloughed can work for other organizations and carry on with training so can self-employed people who will be looking to get this special grant. I think that covers all of the points that I wanted to talk about this evening. Um, I'm going to pass back to Wendy um, and Peter, my colleague who's working with Wendy, to look at any questions. Um, I hope you found that useful. Um, and remember, we're always here to ask individual questions if required. Thank you, Wendy. Awesome. Thank you so much, Nikki. We um, did manage to get the tech work, so um, I don't, I can't promise you've gone viral, but we were streaming on Facebook, Nikki. So um, we are live on Facebook as well. Uh, we've had quite a few questions in, so 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 bear with me. And a couple have come in through Facebook as well. Um, going back to uh, one of the earlier slides. Um, concerning the um, self-employment um, and someone has asked a question relating to uh, public liability and indemnity insurance and they have asked can I confirm you don't need public liability and indemnity, insur indemnity insurance if you work from home and not in a building or with public do you know if that's correct Nikki? I think it does depend on the type of work that the person is undertaking um, so I'd probably need a little bit more detail about the type of work they're doing, but I think it's yep. direct that a lot of self-employed uh, veterinary nurses are with and I would check with them. Brilliant, thank you. Um, there's um, so many nurses diversifying now in different roles and, and, and different um, um, jobs. 
so um, I think um, not to, uh, working from home is is, is becoming um, a lot more popular, a more, lot more common. Yep. For nurses. Um, a, a comment here rather than a question um, from somebody to say, I've had all my work cancelled, um, but the VDS offer some good lectures for support. Um, so that's just uh, another avenue to get get support. And I think that they're a good place to also ask about insurances. It will purely depend on the type of work that you're undertaking. Yes, so um, as, 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 as locums, um, we often have our own VDS cover. Um, so um, do check with them as to exactly what that, that cover includes as far as indemnity, public liability and that type of thing. You, I would, um, and I'm sure Nikki would second this, recommend you contact your insurance provider directly to clarify exactly what, what you're covered for. Yeah, good idea. Um, okay, so we've got some questions here about um, limited companies. So uh, one question is, what happens if you're self-employed via a limited company? and the company doesn't have two years of books to show previous profits? Um, that's going to be, as long as you've traded in 2019-2020 um, and you've filed a tax return in the past, under that limited company, you should be eligible for the self-employment income support scheme. Um, Super. So it's very important that you have the trading profits and your income um, for 2018-2019 or that you've traded in 2019-2020 um, and depending on how many years you've worked under a limited company they'll look at your average trading profits and total income across the three years 2016-17 <coughs> excuse me 2017, 18, and 18, 19. Brilliant. I think um, uh, that covers another question. Someone's asking um, uh, one tax year return being um, substantially more. Do they average over both years? So um, I think that's that's been answered there. Um, Another question here, which I think came in from Facebook, um, and I think this relates to the limited company. I didn't realise dividends were included. How do we go about this? Um, we will provide a link on the blog tomorrow because that's a very new update yeah. from the government um, on the dividend side of things. And it only came in another week, uh, uh, last week. Brilliant. That's uh, great news for all of us who run limited companies yippee um <laughs> let's have a look and someone's asking um about the name of the places to go for to financial help so all the links um will be up with the recording uh, on the blog post so we'll be signposting there uh, bear with me i'm just scrolling down the questions here and some of them are ones that we, we, we've answered. If you're self-employed, can you work for someone else through PAYE or will it affect the grant you would be eligible for? The grant is um, looking at what you have done in the past and it doesn't preclude you from working for somebody else currently. Um, yep. Self-employed people can still apply for universal credit if they have no income. Um, yep. You can go to your bank. Um, there are rent holidays available and rate holidays available from local authorities if you have a premises um, so all of these uh, local councils the bank universal credit they're all the places to start looking in the first instance for support super thank you uh, and also for the member for our bvna members that are on this call um what's the best way to get hold of the, the, the bmas line and get hold of you or your team nikki um, on the slide that we have up at the moment says bvna at bvna.co.uk um, but if I go back to the beginning it's advisory service at bvna.co.uk so advisory service at bvna.co.uk or the telephone number is 01822 
So 01822 870270. And we have put together a series of additional fact sheets to what BMAS normally provides through the whole of this process. And as they're being updated, we're sending them out to um, the updates to people who've requested them. Um, so self-employed changes, the fact sheet we've got needs altering, we'll, we'll make sure they constantly get the updated version. That's awesome. And, and just a note that um, when you're contacting the advisory service, um, it will save time if you have your BVNA mem membership number ready. Um, because that is something that's checked because this is a, a member benefit service that is a, a membership service including the membership fee so just make sure you've got your membership number um, to hand because it will I'm sure make Nikki and the team's life easier if you've got that ready for them yeah certainly will thank you uh, sorry I'm just going through all the questions again um, can the self-employment income support scheme be backdated if we were now to go from being self-employed sole traders to a limited company it should be the same it depends on the date that you transfer from the self-employment to the limited company and that date will be all important um, so individuals who've not submitted um, their returns for 2018-19 had a few weeks into April so let's hope that most of the people on this call have done that um, if you change the status of your company but you've got all of the records HMRC should be able to see that you were a sole trader and then you transferred to a limited company and it should be quite seamless um, there's not too much differentiation between that um, and it's yep. a bit like the people who um, were furloughed in the first instance. There was one specific date and then the, you had to be employed by it. And then the government slid that back and it meant yeah. a whole host of people were then eligible to furlough. I think they're trying to be inclusive as opposed to exclusive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, awesome. I know time's ticking on, but if we can keep you connected for a little bit longer, Nikki, we've still got quite a few questions to get through if we can. Yes, that's fine. Awesome. Um, so if you do work other than nursing through your limited company, can you claim anything, especially if nursing was your main income? Yes. It's not. Well, that's a simple answer. <laughs> it's not exclusively for nursing. It could be that you're um, part self-employed um, as a HR consultant and part as a gardener or part as a nurse. So it's about your whole package of what you're self-employed as. It's awesome. not linked to a specific industry. Perfect, thank you. Um, and I think um, this question um, relates to the um, IR35. I've been locum in for years. As long as I keep away from the large companies, I should be able to carry on as I have been before. We earn very little and yet being forced into a corner. Yeah, I think that's true. And I think um, a lot of the HMRC's responsibility does rest with the individual to check the, the size and the um, income of the practice that you're working for. But it is putting a lot of responsibility to the practice to, to check for themselves that they are, in fact, um, out with the IR35. So yeah. for smaller veterinary practices, I think it will be okay for people to continue as they are um, and not be subject to the IR35. But if it's a large corporate, be very careful. And sometimes people um, feel it's in quite intrusive to ask what the turnover is of the company they're working for. But actually it is your responsibility. And even if you're working for a a private smaller practice let's say um, if they're limited you can of course go onto company's house for free um, and yeah. see what their turnover is so you should be able to make a pretty good um, informed judgment on whether or not you need to apply for IR35. Yeah. Um, a question here which might be a little bit individual to answer on a, on a webinar but I'll, I'll ask it anyway and you can let me know Nikki if this is something you need to answer offline um 
So I have a car on finance that is solely used for my business so that it eats into my profits. Is there any way I can claim this back? I don't think you'd be able to claim that back, but you might be able to speak to the um, lease hire or lease purchase company and ask if there's a possibility of a reduced repayment or yeah. even a holiday from the um, from the payments. A bit like people can ask for mortgage holidays, etc. at the moment. Brilliant. Thank you, Nikki. A lot of um, uh, loans, credit cards and financial services are, are offering that a lot easier than the, than the normal uh, is, is, is three months breaks on these things, aren't there? So yes. there is help out there if, if I think we need to just uh, investigate and ask, ask around. Um, another question here is, is there any funding for a sole trader with less than a year's trading? I think that is going to depend very much on when the year started and finished um, and, and against these specific scheme rules. Um, so on that basis, I would suggest that person does give us a call um, and we can have a look at their individual circumstances and the start and stop of the trading. Um, thank you. Um, is it a mistake to mix self-employed with employed work as it makes as it can make things difficult and complicated? I think um, as the provider of um, an HR employment related service, I would say it's OK to do it. If you speak to your accountant, they will probably tell you it makes it a bit trickier, um, but yeah. it, there's nothing to stop it. Um, yeah. So, for example, you could be a sole trader or a limited company providing veterinary care or training, um, but you might go to a college where they would undoubtedly put you on PAYE and be doing lecturing for a day or a half a day a week. And that would be on a PAYE, pay as you earn, tax, um, national insurance at source, plus perhaps working three days a week for yourself. And that's perfectly viable it just means the tax return slightly more complicated yeah um just a couple more questions here and um, there's one question here which is um a little longer and again maybe um the, the need for an individual call on this but it's just perhaps um, some general guidance to start with um, i've only been self-employed since august so i'm not able to claim a grant i have applied for universal credit is there any other help I can get? I live on my own with a mortgage, so I'm struggling with a £409 that they have provided. That sounds really difficult. Um, there's nothing else I'm actively aware of at the moment. I don't know if Peter can think of anything who's on the call, but certainly I would be talking to the mortgage company about yeah. a holiday. Yeah, I was going to suggest that as well, Nikki, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, the, the, the mortgage break, um, yeah. I think that they're being given, um, you don't have to jump through the hoops that you perhaps used to be able to. Um, I believe most mortgage companies are, uh, are offering three months, you know, um, pretty easily to start with to try and try and ease that. Um, and, and if you, you know, other credit providers, as I've said, uh, um, I've heard are also offering um, breaks um, more easily. Um, it's a difficult difficult situ situation um, to be in um, unfortunately I'm not sure if we have any um, if anybody else on the call has any suggestions to pop in the chat box um, um, but I think that that's all we can can suggest at the moment unfortunately um, it's a sad situation for a lot of people um, okay so um, Another question, which I think is almost um, another webinar, due to IR35, can you point me in the right direction on how to diversify in the future? Um, I'm not sure if we can cover all of that in, in, in the question and answer session here, but maybe that's uh, um, a, a good suggestion for a webinar um, in the future um, on, on you know, how we can diversify. Um, if anybody has any other questions, um, then please do type them into the chat box. I think we've covered most of the questions now. Um, it, if you have any other questions, I'll try and keep Nikki for a few more moments. Um, 
we've just had um, thank you all so much this has been really useful it is three hours later here in dubai so i'm off to bed but this is well worth staying up for thanks um, well dedication to webinars that's um, great thank news. you very much <laughs> um and um brilliant thank you so much um, some lovely comments there so um thank you very much nikki um for 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 giving up your time again this evening um, for supporting um, the profession and, and the BVNA members. It is, it is very um, much appreciated. Um, when people leave a webinar, there should be a survey that pops up. So please, 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 please give us your feedback. Um, these webinars are for you, our members, and currently they're open to a wide profession, so hence a Facebook Live and the open registration. Um, but it's important that we, we plan these and deliver them the content and the timing and the format that is what you want. So please do fill out that survey at the end there. Um, and um, let us, and I've just been, there's uh, our head of membership, Katie has just given me a nudge. Um, and also um, if you want to um, get advice from our advisory service, um, you do need to be a BVA member. So if you want to join, then please do let us know and um, we can sort you out with, with membership as well and all the information that you need. Um, we've had thank you and smiley faces. Um, thanks, Nikki and Wendy, and some green love hearts. Awesome. <laughs> thank you so much, Nikki, and also Peter, who's been very quiet in the background. Um, but thank you both very much for your time this evening, and we will see you again very shortly on another webinar. Bye for now, everybody. Thanks, Wendy. Bye bye, everybody. Stay safe. Thanks, Nikki. Bye. Bye. <laughs>